Welcome to Trading Nation. Pleased to be joined once again by Yale professor Robert Schiller, who wrote an, a piece, I'll call it an op-ed, in the New York Times professor saying, what is Bitcoin really worth? Don't even ask. We have to ask. That's why we have you on. Is there any way? That's right. I do find it interesting. There are people that come on, CNBC, other networks, and say Bitcoin is worth this. Do you find that interesting? Because I don't know how you establish a price target when there's no earnings right. or cash flow that, that are generally used to measure the value of stocks. Well, there is the uh, medium of exchange function that it's offering. Uh, and there's also a store of value function. That is, you can hide away your wealth in there. Uh, and it's mobile. You can go anywhere and get at it. How valuable is that, though? I don't, I, you know, I don't personally see any value to that. Uh, that's the problem. It, 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 they have a really clever technique to generate something. And it could be valued. Uh, that's, but that's why it's especially likely to become a bubble, because when you see people valuing it, you start to wonder, maybe they're right. You know, I don't want to get too crazy about this. I had this discussion uh, on Saturday night at a dinner party, so there might have been some adult beverages involved, which is back in the old days, I gave you a rock. It had value. Then I gave you coin money that had value. Then we started writing checks. The paper, people were skeptical it had value. Now I get my work, my work pays me the direct deposit into my bank account. It's just a series of numbers on a bank screen. And once in a while, I can pull cash out. Why wouldn't Bitcoin yeah. be the same thing? Isn't Bitcoin, and not just Bitcoin, anything else that, that either exists now or may exist, changing the way we look at, quote, right. money? Yeah, uh, well, money is just pieces of paper. But or we numbers think they on have a computer value. screen. Well, that's not even a piece of paper. It's a charge somewhere in some transistor. Uh, but uh, the, the, the fascination people have with Bitcoin is partly because of the mystery of money itself. Why do these pieces of paper have value? And couldn't something else have value? Plus, we, we all believe in a first mover advantage. Bitcoin was first. Uh, some smart guy named Satoshi Nakamoto, maybe invented this. We like that story. And, and we believe, you know, every country, it's the oldest university in the country that is most famous, typically. People believe in first mover. Uh, and so it sounds right to them. I can't say that it's definitely wrong, but it sounds like a flimsy argument. Yeah, Satoshi Nakamoto, by the way, could be nobody, could be a group of people, could be an anagram, it could be a made-up name. We have no, yeah. we have no idea. But I'll make the, I guess I'll make the bullish Bitcoin case, which is that if you believe there's 80 trillion in global money, gold, silver, other things that are marketable, right. and Bitcoin gets just 5% of that, and there's only 21 million Bitcoin ever minted, that's 190,000 each. I did the numbers. If you got 1% yeah, right. of it, it'd be 38,000 per Bitcoin. Could you see a time at which Bitcoin does collect a percent of the world's enthusiasm for whatever money is, whatever money might be, ultimately? You're doing a great job of defending Bitcoin. Well, people, so people yeah, have I, suggested, oh, you're so neg you know, you're negative on Bitcoin or whatever. I'm trying yeah. to take the other side of the argument. You know, when I was in Lithuania two weeks ago, this is little Baltic country, somebody said to me, back in 1940, the Russians came and took them over. And it, you know what? If you had a house, you know what happened to it? They took it. If you had a bank account, you know what happened to that? They took it. They were very self-righteous. This is communism. We're there for the people. But if you had Bitcoin, they couldn't have taken it. That was, that was kind of a stunning statement. I thought about it. But you actually have to, if you're going to protect yourself against the communists, you probably have to memorize your uh, private key and public key and not write it down anywhere. If it's in your head, uh, I don't see how they can take it. People are losing them, by the way, which, which some people see, would account to the, to, to the, uh, to the bull case. Well, I know. Does, does Bitcoin, Ethereum, like, does the whole crypto craze say more about us and psychology than it does maybe about the right. future of money? Yeah, so I, uh, I think that the value of Bitcoin is exceptionally ambiguous. Uh, you, you just put an upper bound on it with the value of the world's money supply. <laughs> but that upper bound is awfully big. So it could be anywhere between zero and, uh, and that. 
uh, that's very different from most stock. Most stocks you, or any investment you buy, there's some trading history, there's some earning stream. So it, the, the mind has trouble dealing with such ambigu ambiguity. Neuroscientists have shown that the brain works different in ambiguous problems, in, in making choices in ambiguous situations. Now you might think that people who are educated will transform the decision problem into something precise involving probabilities and scenarios, but it doesn't seem like the brain is doing that. No, but it, you're, it you're an extremely smart and rational guy, maybe one of the smartest people in finance in the world, a professor. We've been talking for 20 years. Yeah. What's your least favorite food? What's the last thing that you would eat? I ask this for a reason. Oh, my least favorite. Mine are beets. Uh, if there's a beet on the plate, I'll just discard the entire meal. What, what's oh, the, yeah. what's the, le the, the thing you hate the most, <laughs> food-wise? Something rough. Uh, beets, beets, come, uh, beets come close. Okay, so here's uh, my point. Uh, if you're hungry, you're on an island, you're very, very yeah. hungry, there's six or seven other people. <laughs> All you have are beets, which you would avoid normally, but you're hungry, there's nothing else on the... Suddenly, the beet has huge value. Right. People may may trade yeah. for it. They may give money for it. They may they may fight over the beat, even though you hate them. You need it. Many people will argue that Bitcoin is the new gold in that way. It protects Absolutely. you from this from this fiat currency, the power of government. And even if you don't agree with it, the scarcity gives it that value. And I think you're absolutely right. That is the source of value for Bitcoin and for other uh, currencies. Um, and it also reflects a kind of political feeling that has come up where we mistrust government institutions more than usual. Both sides on the Trump-Clinton uh, spectrum talk about fake news. Uh, they both talk about institutions which are corrupt. In an atmosphere like that, uh, and especially with our American spirit of individualism, there's some natural appeal toward a, a kind of currency that the communists can't take. The liberals can't take. Uh, that's the story. And it, was, it, it, it just appeals to people with an independent spirit. Any, any chance Yale's going to launch a cryptocurrency class soon? It, you may already have one. No. I don't know. I did not go to Yale. <laughs> I, I talk about it in my financial markets class. And it's always a good moment. The students love to hear about this. Sometimes I'm boring, sorry to say. No, I doubt you. They pay their tuition maybe in Bitcoin. If it goes down, it'll be a good deal. If it goes up, it'll be a terrible deal, I suppose. Uh, I urge everybody to read your piece in the New York Times. Professor Robert Schiller, always a great discussion. You and I will uh, get together and share our dislike of beets someday. Professor, thank you. <laughs> All right. Appreciate that. Uh, if you're a beet farmer out there, I apologize. But thank you for watching Trading Nation either way. I'm Brian Sullivan. We'll see you next time. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.